The Lord, the Lord be with you. Be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The hymn 288. 228. Lord be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry. My, my, my. We start again. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we confess in our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy.
the collect for the third Sunday in Lent from page 164. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we are in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all the adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Word of God, written in Exodus, reading chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make, her, make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water or under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the, th but the seventh day to the Lord your God you shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days all that is in them but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that your Lord is giving to you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19, found on page 490. Psalm 19, found on page 490. We will be reading alternate verses, pausing at the asterisk. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. 
It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and give wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and, in, and innocent of great offense. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father. A reading from the Word of God, written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, reading verses 18 through to 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but unto us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the one, where is the scribe? Where is the debater of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolish, foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe for Jesus demands signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than the human strength. The word of the Lord. The gradual hymn is 675.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 2 verses 13 to 22. Glory to Christ our Savior. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple. He found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cord, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the dove, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said to him, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body, after he was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of Christ. of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, be always accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Morning, everyone. The theme for my sermon this morning is zeal for your house will consume me. And I'm going to ask us to make a look at your colleagues for the day and the colleagues for Ash Wednesday and note some words. In the collect for the day we said keep us both outwardly in our bodies and in our souls that we may def- be defended from the adversaries that may happen to the body and from the evil thoughts that assault our souls. And then in the colic for Ash Wednesday, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness of your sins. I cannot but add to what I have prepared because of what I see as your theme in your newsletter. And I'm going to seek to use the commandments and bring them into the zeal for God's house. You will remember that the Ten Commandments came after the Jews had come across from the Red Sea and was in the wilderness. It was necessary for God to put them under manners. They had become very disobedient. But God wanted them to be his church, his body, the ecclesia, his people, the proclaimer of good news, to be the agent of change in a hostile world. And so he caused them to spend some 40 years preparing them in the wilderness and gave them these commandments. 
If in actual fact you have read the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, you will see that there is not only just 20, 10 commandments as written in Exodus, but over 470 commandments, which are really what the Israelites did with the Ten Commandments. They pulled it and dissected it to give us what we understand today. But the basis of the Ten Commandments is what they lived on. They were given these Ten Commandments and they went, having got, gotten across the Red Sea, now they were going to go against the Jordan. And Moses had to stay back. He died there. In the Deuteronomy you will see that he died. So his brothers took the Israelites across the Jordan. And they were to go as God had directed them. Going knowing that he had commanded them in the commandments not to do certain things. And he told them, do not mix up yourself with the rest of them over there. And if you're going to, kill them all off. All the Hittites, Amorites, anything that had the ITs after it was to be destroyed. But the Israelites continued along a path of disobedience and in many cases were exiled, oppressed and at the time of Jesus they were under the oppression of Rome under Caesar and Herod. So at the time of Jesus they were still enslaved people because of their disobedience to God. Now God, because he so loved us, sent his son to die for us. And as he began to teach, he was called to have to question on two occasions what were the commandments. And Jesus summarizing them using Deuteronomy and Leviticus by saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now take a look at those Ten Commandments. The first four has to do with our relationship with God, including not calling his name in vain, which we do every day. And that we must seek to always find time for rest, a Sabbath, a time to spend for our rest. But we must always be praising him. We must always be giving him the glory. Then there is the sixth through the tenth, which has to do with our relationship with God. So with each other. Don't kill, don't murder, don't steal, don't be covetous. Which has to do in the fact that if we love each other, then we won't do those things. And then the fifth, well, let's wonder why it was put there. You ever wonder? Because all it says, honor your mother and your father, and your days may be long in this life. And many of us will have a problem with our parents, don't it? But God says, whatever it is that you have with them, you are to honor them. Because your days will be long. And long here does not mean long, but quality. Quality of life. And if we live right with our parents, and as Paul would said, parents don't bring your children to wrath, then we can have a quality of life. And when we're mother and father dead, we won't bawl and bawl and say, Lord, Mama, because we have lived our lives in such a way that we can say, Mom and Daddy, 
rest in God's peace. And so the commandments have come, and Jesus, having then brought it to those two, before he left, he then says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Love, then, is for the quality of life we live. And if we love and love God, then we have a responsibility to do what God has called us to do. You know, when I was reflecting on this passage of scripture now, which comes from John, I'm not going to deal with Corinthians. I remember when I preached here a couple Sundays ago and preached about the demons. Okay. All of a sudden, Jesus' belt come. Because Jesus is going to do the same thing again this time. You will remember I said that Jesus in that pre observed what was going on before he went into the temple. Notice that Jesus again observed what he was going to do. The passage says the Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people with cattle, sheep, doves, and money changers. Now, don't get them all wrong. It is the custom which sometimes we must bear in mind can be not good. But it was the custom that at Passover the members of the community, the Jews who their religion is Judaism, continued this act of sacrifice, which is what the Passover was all about. The sacrificing of a lamb, placing the blood on the lintel of the door, and which God passed over, bringing hope and peace to the people. These sacrifices, however, was not just to kill a lamb, because you might not have had a sheep. So you could bring dove, but the requirement is that a dove must be without blemish. I remember one time, I don't know if it's happening now, you used to have a lot of pigeons around here. Have you been seeing them much? But have you ever seen a perfectly white pigeon? Pigeon always have a little piece of black in there. But the Jewish tradition is that that pigeon, that dove, must not have a blemish in it. And the story is that sometimes they would find the doves as close as possible and pick out the brown. Now, the Gentiles didn't really have all of this. So for them, they would have to purchase and in the confines of the temple, when they would have come up to the temple, they would then purchase. But there's a temple coin, which is not the coin used by the people. So you also had to change the temple coin, so change your coin to the temple coin, and then take the temple coin and purchase. So, if the temple coin costs in relationship to the Jamaican dollar a one to 156, then you know that somebody's going to add something to the 156. So you're going to buy it at 160. So somebody's making money off of somebody, not true? So in the temple, there is things going on that is custom and culture but is corruption and violence and thiefing. Jesus sees this and says 
that you are making my temple, God temple, a marketplace. Is it still the custom here? That after harvest you sell on Monday morning? And over. Well, you do it on Sunday, no, you don't do it on Monday morning. How many of us old enough that know that shop never opened on Sunday? All right. Now, everything opened on Sunday, not true? Because what? We have moved from the commandments to spend time with God to wanting to do those things that society has caused us to want. And so notice what the collect speaks about that thing is outwardly and the other thing that is inwardly, which is a sacrament. Anybody know what a sacrament is? Remember? A sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. So here now Jesus has come and he's now going to cleanse the temple. He's going to get rid of the corruption and those things that are not necessarily in the temple. If it will happen outside, it will happen outside, go on. But in the temple, when we read the collect, for both Sunday and Ash Wednesday, we speak about the wretchedness of our hearts. And in my mind then, God's temple, as Paul writes, is in our hearts. Paul says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and God dwells within you? So I'd like to suggest to us that the reading for today is not about cleansing this temple, which I spoke about some time ago with the demons, but this temple, our hearts. The psalm concluded about the fact that we must meditate on these things. Let me ask us a question. Is there a necessity for some cleansing in our hearts today? Is there any cattle, any sheep, any dove, and any money that is in our hearts? I want to say yes. You see, too often we desire the things of the earth over the things of God. And our minds and lives usually is filled of those things and needs to be cleansed out of. Remember I said the honor your mother and your father? Usually what is it that causes us to dishonor our parents? What is it that causes our children to have a difficulty with us? And that is the double standards that we live. Do as I say, but not as I do. Shut your ears and move. We do not spend time with our children to guide them and direct them along a path, especially of us Christians, to make them understand what it is to be Christian. I have this in my hand, which I have addressed on many occasions. You will note 
that some of our parents nowadays have left this to be the parent of the child. And when this become the parent of the child, where is the guidance against immorality, against the division? Where is that? I got one of one of my principals texted me to say that a student was missing for about two days. She was found. As far as she was concerned, she was not lost. She dressed to go to school. Her parents saw her go to school, leave the house in her uniform. But there's a bus that would take her to school. And the bus driver said she did not come on the bus. We then found a tape of her doing certain things. Because she was urged by those on this to come to where she was. Yes, parents will have a problem with some of our children, but children need to also honor our parents. You see, these things that are impacting us, as the colleague says, the things that are impacting us outwardly, that causes us to contemplate the evil within our souls. Jesus says it's not what comes into us that defiles us, but what comes out of us that defiles us. And that is what Jesus wants to get rid of. So he'll use a whip. His whip in this time now is the Holy Spirit, which we and you and I must seek because the Holy Spirit is that which will enable us to have clean hearts and pure hands. Jesus, we can always say, was angry when he did it. But are we angry with ourselves when we continue to sin? If we say we sin and we deceive ourselves, then the truth is not in us. Are we angry enough with ourselves? to seek repentance, to turn away from the life that we live. Jesus also says, don't worry about those who can kill the body. But those, those who can kill both the body and the soul. And there's only one person can kill both the body and the soul. And that is God who says that because you have not turned to me, you will die. Sin and death. But if you turn to me, then you can have life and have it more abundantly. And so therefore, this zeal of God for his temple is a zeal of God for each and every one of us. His zeal is to save us, to redeem us, to bring us into relationship with himself so that we can live in peace and love and grace and mercy you know I've dosed my brother here but I wanted to trouble him I see another brother but the other brother you know a little politics Barrington Ludlow Suarez was one of the main architects of the municipality of Portmore. Am I not? Yes. Barrington Ludlow Suarez was one of the main architects for us to be able to elect our own mayor. And I find it hard to know that we can't understand why we must 
continue to elect our own mayor. But that's the part of politics. You see, if we don't understand what we are about, then we are going to fail at what we are about. If we want to share in the kingdom of heaven, then we have to know something about God in Christ. Seek ye first the king of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. You here in Portmore, have, we are now a municipality, I think about 20 years, about 20 years. For two and a half years before that, we pushed for it. I am begging of us not to misunderstand how we came to be having this municipality and to see how best we can continue to maintain it and to see if this municipality can be an example for others. People would like to change it to a parish, but if they return it to a parish or turn it to a parish, please maintain the right to elect your mayor. Because in my mind, though he may be PNP or in JLP, it is you and I who have elected him. He was nominated, was not nominated, not put into place by the political powers of that time. What we did not get, and I wish we had gotten, was a right to recall. But they would not give us the right to recall. Because if a mayor now do nothing who we vote for must be recalled. But we did not get that right. I would urge you and I who live in Portmore, because my house is still in Garvermaid, my vote is still in Portmore, to seek how best we work towards the soul of a Portmore that is better for us of Portmore. Yes, there is some politics behind that, but the idea is that we wanted autonomy to do what we wanted to do. We then have to do what the Bible urges us to do. We have to speak out against the wrongs that the politicians do. Even the wrongs of the church. Because right now we are celebrating 200 years of our founding as a diocese. Let us not forget what happened for the three or 400 years before when the Church of England continued to undermine and uphold what is slavery, which you and I are part of. So don't forget our past. Use our past to contemplate our present so that our future can be better. So it is with our relationship with God. We must look at ourselves and see the inner depths of our evil, the corruption inside of us, which then will come out to do what we want to do to see how best we can get rid of it. Whip it out to become the agent of change for a better society, a better community that we are part of. And in so doing, we become part of that group of persons to become the agent of change to share in the kingdom of heaven. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things will be added unto you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, let us now have a zeal for God's house. A zeal to cleanse the hearts, our hearts, to become the place of hope and renewal. A cleansing 
filled with the Holy Spirit to be the agent of change and renewal. <coughs> I'd like to go back to the Old Testament, for example. As you are aware, the Jews and their religion is Judaism. We call our religion Christian or Christianity, followers of Christ. <coughs> But the Jews had the same mandate in Judaism as the Christian has today. The mandate of Judaism was to bring all the other nations to one God. Because all the other nations had many other gods. And so it was the responsibility and the right of the Judeans, the Judeans, to be God's people, to be God's enabler, to be the church, to be the renewal of hope. So it is with Christians, you and I. You have been called by God. We have been called by God to be the agent of change by the lives we live, the examples we set. And if we are going to do that, we have to be pure in heart and mind. Could I then ask us to take a look again at the colleague for Ash Wednesday? Almighty and everlasting God, you hate, I'm trying to itch. <laughs> The sign of the H, I got about A-T-E. -A All right. Almighty and evil God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness of our sins. I ask us then, as we contemplate ourselves today, and when we come to the point of making our confession, that we really seek to ask God to forgive us, to cleanse our hearts, to whip out the evil, the, all the things that are not necessarily to be there, so that we can share in God's grace and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Say together the Nicene Creed found on page 104. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, one in being the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
for, for our intercession this morning will be guided by the prayers of the church found on page 212. Prayers of the church, page 212. God, our Father, we praise you that you are always ready to forgive the penitent. Bring us by your spirit to true repentance and the joy of knowing your forgiveness. Accept through Jesus Christ our Lenten acts of love and sacrifice. Prepare us to celebrate his Passover and to share his risen life. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we pray for your church throughout the world, for Howard, our Archbishop, and in this diocese, Leon and Garth, our bishops, the clergy and the people. Free us from dependence on material goods and the worship of power, and from all that hinders our union with you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for our country and all in authority. Purge our land of all that is contrary to your will. Bring us all to know Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, that we may live in harmony with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for all who suffer, and especially for victims of greed and violence. Make your love known to them and to those who cause suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we commend to your loving care all who will die during this Lent. Bring us all through the passion and death of your Son to share in the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray with the altar guild. O great Creator, who has filled the world with beauty, Grant that we who work among beautiful things may find in them reflections of your goodness, your love, and the miracles of your creation. May they ever remind us of the many blessings which you have showed upon all people, and especially upon your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the Brotherhood. Almighty and eternal Father, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, graciously grant we beseech you to inspire and sustain the prayers and efforts of the members of our brotherhood and to hallow their lives, and grant that men and youth everywhere may be brought into the kingdom of your Son and may be led from strength to strength until they attain the fullness of eternal life. Through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bearing in mind the need for our souls to be cleansed. And the only way we can have this is to find repentance, seeking forgiveness. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore, using form B, confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. They who thus serve Christ shall accept for God and are approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The hymn for the offertory is 729. Having been forgiven of our sins, it is our hope we come to the Eucharist with a clean mind, a clean heart, and a renewed soul. Because in this clean heart, in this clean mind, and a renewed soul, we are now going to 
to share in the Eucharist by receiving in our spirit through the sacrament Christ's body and blood to find space and hope for it. So together, Father, we offer to you these you have given us this bread, this wine, this money. We then pass our lives and our work to the Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. And wine from the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people come channel in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you bid your faithful people cleanse and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. In that Eucharist, we recognize our sinfulness. All holy and glorious Father, our Creator God, we give you thanks because in your loving wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you. Yet in every age, your steadfast love has called us to return, to live in union with you. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have gathered the people to yourself to make known in every Place is perfect offering which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you, which is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it for the remembrance of me. The first of the acclamation. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Heavenly Father, rejoicing in his holy incarnation, his blessed passion, his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection from the dead, his glorious ascension to heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer you this bread and this cup. We pray you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit and be one body, one Spirit. Let faith and love increase in us. Unite us with all bishops, all other ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God living and departed whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Apostles and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come. With him and in him and through him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one prayer. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Oh, oh, oh. 
gifts of God for the people of God.
not received and need to be blessed, I invite you now to come for your blessing.
And I long to worship you. The second of the prayers on page 148. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace in holiness to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasant good morning to you. Uh, I see some people finding there's a, it's a little hot this morning. But I, let me say first and foremost, let me say welcome to everyone. Um, those who regularly worship with us and those worshiping us with, for the first time, those here and those online. Anyone worshiping us, with us for the first time, please stand so that we can acknowledge you. No, I think we are all family today and no new persons online. Well, I have to acknowledge the online community, you know, I'm not going to leave them out. Uh, <laughs> right. Yes, I, I was referring to the heat earlier and I said to myself, I wonder if it was caused by Father Barry. He clearly was on fire this morning. And I was saying to him, I sat there and was saying, preach it, Father Barry, preach it. And Father Barry, really enjoy your service this morning, your, your sermon this morning. And I said to him, he didn't even look at his, his notes. He didn't even open his tablet. He was just on fire, and we really appreciate it. And I see, I'd like to welcome you again, and I'd like to welcome your family. Mrs. Suarez is here. The two daughters are here. And grandchildren. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is really good, a family morning this morning. Happy to see you all. And so, I want to um, announce the birthdays. Uh, there are no, no recorded anniversaries 
this morning. And so celebrating her birthday this morning, and I see a gleaming face down there, Stephanie Brown, um, Victoria Walters, Odavia, and Octavia Morris from St. Andrew, Alison Hurge, who is um, in Brownstone at this point in time, Leonard Power, Demora Robinson, Malisha Brown, Judith Van Verving, Trisha Elliott, and this is on Yekan Linton. Birthday people must stand in or come to think of it. Stephanie, yes, please. Let us, um, right. Carrie Ann Chambers, uh, and this is Mixi Akoy, and Patre Palmer. Or is it Patre or Patre? Patre. Patre, thank you. I saw it is spelled here. Um, let us acknowledge and sing you up. Happy <laughs> <birthday>. right. <laughs> So invite those who are traveling. Yes. A anyone traveling this week? Okay. Thanks, Father Barry. And I will now return. And I'd like to make an announcement. Can I get the banner? Yeah. Yeah. Get the banner. And uh, we heard good news last night. I announced it in the, in the group, but m many of you may not have read it as yet. The Portmore Deanery Mothers Union were joint winners with West Milan for the Sir Clifford Campbell Award for, creative, for um, three, three um, activities. Creative, creativity of report, best reports, and reports that are submitted on time by the Mothers Union. And, They have won this banner, and it's going to be shared. And I asked Father Paul to come forward. It's going to be shared with, for six months with um, Holy Spirit, and another six months with the Westman and Deanery, right? And I. Apparently. So she, six come and tell months. us some more. Come and tell us some more about it. The Portmore Deanery will have the banner for six months. But we're going to share it among the three churches. Holy Spirit will have it for two months, St. Paul's for two, and Reconciliation for two. And I know she will hand it over to Father Paul. <laughs> go, go forward, go on, so we can take photos. You're supposed to hand it to him. Yes. <laughs> All right, just touch it. Yeah. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's another one? Okay, proceeding on, uh, Father Paul, would you like to say something? Oh, yes. Morning, everyone. Morning. Um, first of all, congrats to the Mother's Union. It's always um, wonderful when you go to things like Synod and and you hear about this little church named Holy Spirit in a Portmore, Cumberland, and Mother's Union, and Windis, and it's always wonderful. So we congratulate and we pray that the work will continue and that it will continue to bear fruit, not just for 
banners, but for God's kingdom in this place. Uh, just a little announcement. Some of you may be a little concerned about the state of our garden. Um, the gentleman that we had an arrangement with to come and do the garden should have come on Thursday and on Saturday of this week. Unfortunately, he died. Um, he died on Friday night. Somebody I got close to. Um, his wife is actually our helper. So um, he started having chest pains and shortness of breath. And she worked with us on Friday. And apparently himself and his son, stepson, were cooking, getting things ready for the evening meal on Friday. And he started to feel badly. So he, the son, and he went to lie down, and the son called um, the mother. And she said, well, all right, she's almost home. So she wrapped him up quick, quick, and carry him to Linstead Hospital, and that was it. So I asked, his name was Kian Brian. Um, so I ask your prayers for the Brian family. They are from above rocks, Nicolet. Zion Hill, yeah. So please bear them in your prayers first, because it's a young couple. They've been married now for about what three years. So um, there's a lot for them to manage. All right. Um, I think that was the main thing. So we're looking at God now, again. Um, one who can manage this both properties um, for us. Thank you very much, Father Paul. Well, in the midst of life, there's death, and in the midst of death, there's life. And the Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, the, um, the AYF would like to invite you to a night of prayer and meditation on Friday, March 15, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. here at Church of the Holy Spirit. It is home to all church members and, and also visitors. The activity is being staged under the theme, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. It is an informal event, I'm told. So persons can come, they can sit on the floor, they can sit on the benches. It's a night of prayer and meditation. There will be music, meditative music. And so you can bring your cushions, if you so desire, to just have a, a relaxed, but prayer and meditative time here at the church. There is no online availability for this activity. And, uh, I'd like to also remind you that uh, the pledge forms for the Easter Fair are available. At this point in time, I'll call Mrs. Burton Edwards to come and tell us, give us an update on the Easter Fair. Good morning, everybody. I'm introducing you to my long last friend, our long last friend. Raquel has been coming to this church for a good while, but as usual, COVID separated us. I found her number the other day and I called her and she responded. She was here last week too, but I'm saying to you, she will be one of them working in the information booth on fair day. So be accustomed to her face now, she's not a stranger. Thank you, Raquel. Okay, I am happy 
that is Father Suarez here this morning, who is accustomed to our begging, not a stranger. Please indulge me a couple minutes. I am not Enid Brown. I am Norma Mavis Burton Edwards. But we have some serious issues and we have to deal with them. I have the pledge forms and we need a number of things on this form. If you have not gotten one, please stand and receive one right now. Come Diane. Please stand if you have not got I heard last week that there are persons who said they have never seen one. So those persons are not here? Really? Yes, one over there, one at the back. One here. Anybody else? If you have not, another one, please take a pledge form. And please, 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 please return it by next Sunday because we need to see what we will receive plenty and then we try to I wouldn't say buy beg more right I also have I have crossed out most that's why it's, that's a revised I have crossed out some right I have some flyers here too if you need flyers up the Pla pla pledge form or flyers? Pledge forms. Oh, this is finished? All right. Um, it is also on the, in the groups, the communication groups. The, the, all the items are in the group, so you can just call the office and tell them, Miss Joyce will answer the phone what you will donate to the fair. I was saying the flyers, please take the flyers, give it to your neighbor so that they know. Let me emphasize, Church of the Holy Spirit is putting on the fair and the fair must benefit the community. So don't just take the flyers and the forms and put them down at home. Read it, see what you can, can contribute, hand it to your neighbors. Please, another part that I want to emphasize this morning is our seniors, they are always coming out to the fair and they are not involved because we don't cater for them. This year, we will have a specific area for them and as I mentioned, an information booth, we are trying to get, it's almost confirmed, that we are getting the people from NHF and they will come and register persons over 60 to get their NHF cards. So we want the persons from the community to come out and get their NHF cards. We also will have persons from the Heart Foundation, and they'll be here to do ECG, blood sugar, blood pressure, and BMI test, among other things. We will also have a first aid station, of which nurses from our own congregation will be there if, if there is an accident, and to assist with any eventualities we may have. Church of the Holy Spirit, let us put our hands and hearts together. We need, you want me to tell you the target? $800,000. Some of you might not notice, but we have to be very skillful in protecting you with the tiles that are lifting up. We have a lot to do. We have a lot of work to do. So please, everybody, put hands and hearts together for us to have a successful fair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister Burton. And so please support our Easter fair. Um, continuing with the notices, morning prayer. We'll, be, we'll continue at 6.30 a.m. 
um, weekly. Um, Monday, Bible study in-house at 9 a.m. Wednesday, prayer meeting at 4.30 to 6.15 p.m. and which will be followed by Lenten Bible study via Zoom at 7 p.m. Of course, Thursday is a choir practice at 7 p.m. And let me also say um, thanks to the AWA for undertaking the removal, cleaning, and, and um, payment for, for the drapes in the sanctuary. And um, pre-synod will be this Tuesday at 9 a.m. at St. Luke's Crossroads. And I'm reminding you that the wardens, the treasurer, the treasurer synod reps, deanery reps are invited to attend. All right? And one other, one other notice, final notice, as you know, the Rally of the Months worked last year, worked very well, and we will continue this year. So please continue to give as the Lord blesses you. I know many of you will write it on your envelope, but we're going to be reprinting the cards also. And so we'll find out how many you need at, at the appointed time. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we have asked Sister Karen who did a very good job, good job last year in uh, managing the rally to continue um, to manage that process for us, and she has graciously accepted. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good Sunday. Second offering. 240.
The Lord be with you. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.